Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, May 7th, and it is a beautiful day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Sun is shining, we're in the, the mid to high 60s right now. It's going to, the, the forecast is cloudy with scattered thunderstorms, but I don't care. I, I'm going to do yard work today. I'll tell you more about that, but i uh, got my near up here. And the near up is packed with some, sorry, I've got double bagging here, but uh, this is some haunted pirate ship light from my buddy Mark in Rhode Island. Uh, you guys know I tried haunted pirate ship a while back. Didn't like it because of a lot of Kia. Mark thought, well, maybe uh, less pirate cake. I think he did four to one. So four parts haunted bookshop to one point part pirate cake and uh, this is the first bowl so let me light this up and I'll tell you a bit more about what Mark very kindly did for me mm. getting a lot of Kia mm. but boy that smoothness is there so, I got a surprise package from Mark earlier this week, which included this haunted pirate ship light, as I'm calling it. He didn't call it that, but The idea being that it has less of the Latakia, which I'm not a big fan of. Uh, he also included a, a blend he made called uh, Haunted Gaslight, which is four parts Haunted Bookshop to one part uh, GLP's Gaslight. And that one, I, I smoked that on Friday night during the live stream. I really like that. Very unique, has a very unique spiciness to it. This, uh, only a couple puffs in, this is the first bowl I've had of this. Much more tolerable than the 50-50 mix. Very sweet. Hmm. We'll see how this goes. Now, neither of these are going to be a summertime <laughs> blend for me, because... I rarely smoke Latakia, and when I do, it's, it's almost always in the fall or winter, but uh, I wanted to try it out, and he said this was still a bit young. He had, he had just blended it, so I'm going to put this stuff in some jars and probably take it out uh, in the fall. Uh, the Haunted Gaslight, we, we both thought sounded spooky enough to be a Halloween blend, so we'll see how that goes. Mark also kindly sent me a tin of the uh, Cornellendale Burley Flake number three. Uh, I love the Cornellendale Burley Flakes. And a um, an Alton Brown book, one of his Good Eats books. I, I don't know if you know Alton Brown, uh, Good Eats from the Food Network. Wonderful guy, very funny, very knowledgeable about cooking and, and food. And Mark and I are both fans. My wife is also a huge fan. And uh, she saw the book and, and just took it. So <laughs> I haven't had a chance to look through it yet, but she's, she's happily reading through it. So thank you, Mark. It's much appreciated. So went down a bit of a rabbit hole this week that I'll talk about, but... Uh, the trigger for it was actually uh, getting some very sad news, and that's that our friend Kirk from Florida has passed away. Uh, if you don't know Kirk or didn't know Kirk, I'll put a link to his channel below. Kirk was a good guy. Uh, I didn't know him well, but he was always on my live stream, always had a kind comment. Uh, was battling some health problems over the past uh, year or so. And uh, he, he finally succumbed to those. But uh, from what I understand, Kirk, you know, lived a good life, was a, was a happy pipe smoker. And uh, 
he will certainly be missed in the YTPC. He, I will miss him dearly uh, in the live streams. And his daughter put up a really beautiful uh, video that was, you know, you could tell it was very hard for her to make, letting us know that uh, Kirk had passed on. Uh, so I will link below, I will link to that video, which is on Kirk's channel, and that'll let you uh, find his channel. Please subscribe and watch his videos. He, he, was, he was a good man, and uh, he needs to be remembered. The other thing that happened was uh, my buddy Andy uh, from, uh, I think his channel is called Iron Rails and Pipe Dreams. And I will put a link below to Andy's channel as well. Andy's been in the YTPC a long time. I think he's been around, if not longer than I, about the same amount of time as I, because I remember watching his videos very early on. And he, he hasn't been making a lot of videos lately, but he made a video when... Uh, our, our dear friend Matches860 passed away and he the video got lost he wasn't able to post it and he didn't feel right just rushing through another one and anyway he he eventually got around to making the video he wanted to make and he posted that um, earlier well last week and I watched it and it was it was touching And it just got me thinking about folks that we've lost, like Matches and, and, and Danny Shore. And then I started thinking about the people that were around at that time, back when when I first uh, started uh, here on, on YouTube and in the pipe community. And how many of them are gone? And I remembered a fellow that I'm, I'm guessing most of you did not know, um, but he was a fixture in 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 those early days because he put out a video pretty much every night if i'm remembering right uh and his name was guy witherspoon and guy was a wonderful man he he was a k woody collector very pleasant happy uh guy he always had something interesting to say he was always smoking a an interesting tobacco and i i just enjoyed watching guy i, I, I we would comment back and forth to one another uh you know, it's always hard to say someone's your friend in the context of this experience that we've got here, but, but Guy was a, was a friend. You know, he was somebody that, you know, when his granddaughter was born, I congratulated him on it. He commented to me, to me when I was going through particular things. Uh, you know, we cared about one another, and we we knew one another as best you can through the media of YouTube. I hadn't heard from Guy in quite a while, a couple of years, so I started poking around and it turns out that uh, Guy passed away. He passed away actually back in 2019 and I just didn't know. So, very sad. Um, uh, certainly somebody that I will miss. I uh, have missed because I haven't seen him in so long, but but we'll now miss because he's gone off to the next stage. And all of this got me thinking about those early days and, and how many people aren't around anymore, whether they've passed on, whether they, they just have decided not to do this anymore. I started to think about what it was like to sit down and make a YouTube video back then. I think I've told this story before. My my first, I never planned to have my face on YouTube. I just I didn't think anybody want to see it. I didn't think I had anything to say. But I was watching a lot of videos and commenting, and and people were commenting back to me. And it was uh, Grandpa Cavendish, who also I haven't seen in quite a while. Uh, Ed, I hope you're doing well. If you're out there watching, he he occasionally pops up in a comment, so I know he's still out there. Grandpa Cavendish encouraged me to make a video. And I thought, well, what the heck am I going to make a video about? And I said, well, I do this, this pipe restoration stuff, and I know a little bit about caring for pipes and cleaning them. And so I, uh, I decided to make a How I Clean My Pipes video. And that was the first one. And then 
I got encouraged to do like an introductory video where I just sat in a chair and talked about me and my pipe smoking experience and stuff. And before I knew it, I was making a weekly video like this and mixing that in with pipe repair restoration stuff. And it just grew from there. But if you go back and watch those first couple of videos, and you probably shouldn't because they're not very good, but they're, they're there. You'll see, I was nervous. I was really nervous. My, my, so I'm, I'm a quiet person. Like I'm, I'm one of those people that if I say something in a meeting, I have to repeat it a lot of the time because uh, I don't speak loud enough naturally. And I'm shouting right now. I am actually intentionally raising my voice so that I know the microphone will pick it up. And I was very, uh, difficult to hear, almost whispering at times, uh, my voice was shaking. It was, it was hard, you know, it was really, it was daunting to sit down in front of a camera and, and just start talking. And what I learned pretty early on was the way to deal with that was to just think about the people I was talking to. You know, on the other side of that camera, I had, it's going to sound a little crazy, but I had an imaginary audience. I had people I was talking to. And those people included folks like Matches and Andy, Iron Rail Pipe Dreams, Grandpa Cavendish, Danny Shore, uh, the Artful Codger. I'm trying to think of other folks that were around back then. But there was a group. Uh, there's a guy, another Andy uh, named, uh, who went by Gnome de Tube. And Andy was another guy doing pipe restoration stuff uh, and other things. Wonderful guy. We haven't seen him in a long time, but miss you, Andy, if you're out there. Um, yeah, there was this collection of folks, and they would be sitting on the other side of the camera in my mind, and that's who I was talking to. And it just put me at ease. It was like I was in a, you know, sitting at a table chatting with some friends. And it made the experience a lot easier. And I realized that I don't have that audience anymore. I've got this audience, which I'm very grateful for. And, you know, I, I care deeply about you guys. I know a lot of you guys care about me. And it's, it's a wonderful thing. You know, it's a wonderful community we have. And a wonderful opportunity to sit down and, and smoke a pipe with other people, which is, you know, quite a gift in this day and age. But I don't think about that imaginary audience anymore. In part, because uh, quite frankly, it's exploded, right? I mean, I've got a lot more people that I interact with and, and talk to. Back then, I, I think if we had like 30 or 40 subscribers, we were happy. You know, that was that was a lot for pipe smokers. And there were some guys like Matches had more than that for sure. Uh, but you know, it, you didn't you didn't expect to have hundreds, let alone thousands. And I I have no illusions that there's thousands of people watching me. You know, I, I see the statistics. I know that my average video gets maybe 300 views, maybe. Sometimes it goes up to 400, sometimes it's less than 300. Over time, it might accumulate more. You know, I've got videos with thousands of views, but they're old. Uh, odd ones. My corn cob pipe videos are always in the top 10. I guess people like corn cob pipes. I like them too, but... So yeah, I know I'm not talking to thousands of people, but I'm talking to hundreds of people. And uh, I can't imagine a hundred people sitting in front of me. I can't remember them all. Uh, you know, when one pops up in a comment, I go, oh yeah, that's you know, him. But I can't imagine all of you sitting in a room. The other reason I don't do it anymore is that those people, that I, that, that core group is, is gone. They've either passed on or they just don't make videos anymore. It's striking to think about that. I have been doing this for that long, 
in, in terms of a lifetime. You know, I've only been doing this for, I think it's seven years now. Maybe I'm in my eighth, I don't know. The number of people that we've lost is, is surprising to me. You know, I, I, I focus on the ones that I knew well, but a lot of other guys, awful lot. And I think that's because, I mean, let's face it, most of us are not kids. Um, you know, I know there's some 20, 30 somethings out there watching this and, and, and fantastic, but the majority of us are probably retired or seriously thinking about retirement, you know, in that bracket. Uh, I know I have many viewers that are in their 70s and, you know, it's going to be, I guess this is a part of getting older too. You're going to start knowing more people that are closer and closer to passing on. Um, that can lead to a bit of a philosophical crisis if, if you think about it in the wrong way. I was at a business dinner once with a consultant very well-known scientist who was uh, in his 80s, still active. And we were just talking about historical stuff in his field. You know, I remember when this person did that, and you know, I would say, oh yeah, I was in graduate school, then I remember reading that paper. And we'd talk about that area of research or that person for a little while, and then he'd say, yeah, of course, he's, he's gone now. And after three or four of these, he, he just like sort of stopped for a minute and, you know, a little bit of a sigh and said, you know, it's really hard when most of your friends are gone. And I thought, wow, that's, sounds lonely. I think that's the wrong way to think about it. You know, we're all on a, treadmill of sorts through time. We can't alter that, but we don't have to only stick with the people that are on the treadmill at the same time. You know, we, we have the ability to reach back to those guys in the back and say, hey, how's it going? And you know, maintain friendships and relationships uh, right up to, the, to, to, to when we come to that end of the treadmill. But who's your, who's your secret audience? Do you do that? If you don't, and you, you're somebody that's just starting out, or maybe somebody that's nervous about making your videos every day, maybe, maybe it's something to try. It really helped me. I... This isn't, there's really no theme to this. I just thought it was interesting that, that I guess the turnover, that sounds harsh, but that both the, the rate of turnover, but also the fact that that concept of the secret audience really helped me out. And, and maybe, maybe it'll help someone else out. So I'm going to give Haunted Pirate Ship Light a, um, I don't, I don't do ratings or anything like that, but I'm, I, I prefer this to the regular haunted pirate ship for sure. Based on this one bowl, I still don't know that I'd seek it out. Um, a lot of Kia is still playing too much of a, of a, of a key role in this for me. But remember, I can't smoke big and burly because of a lot of key and a lot of people say they can't even taste it. So. It is what it is, but it's very smooth. And that's something I do enjoy about the Haunted Pirate Ship and the Haunted Pirate Ship Light is the way that lot of key somehow just smooths everything out. 
I just wish it didn't taste like Latakia. <laughs> But we will put put this in a jar and we'll revisit it uh, in the fall, along with the haunted gaslight. I will uh, maybe next week I'll smoke some of the haunted gaslight and talk about that in more detail. Not much I can say about this that I haven't said about haunted pirate ship, other than it's got less lot of key in it. Anyway, uh, Mark, thank you for sharing this. I'm really glad for the opportunity to try it. So what does today hold? I'm buzzing. So I'm doing yard work today. I went to the uh, garden center yesterday. We, we go to this, uh, not little, it's actually quite large, but it's a Mennonite run, family run garden center and uh, they've got good quality stuff and they they're really nice people I, I love going there and uh, I picked up six 40 pound I think bags of uh, composted manure which I, I do maybe every other year just mix that in with the soil and and uh, just add some some nutrients to it but I told you before I've had this problem with the, the soil is getting very compacted in my gardens. So I also bought three of these large bales of uh, peat moss. And the back of my wife's car is completely filled with this stuff right now. So I have to get it out of her car. And then I have to start working this into the, into the soil. So that's going to be uh, what I'm going to do today when it's not raining. And uh, we'll see if that helps. I'll take some pictures and put them on Instagram if you if you're interested in, in following along. But I met the garden center yesterday, and I I don't know if you've worked with peat moss, but you know it comes in these big bales. It's probably oh I don't know two two and a half foot by two foot something like that rectangular bales, and uh, I don't know what these things weigh, but they look like, they don't look like they're going to be heavy. <laughs> it's compressed peat moss, so it's, you know, it's, it's really jammed in there. But it looks like something that would be relatively lightweight. I don't know how to, I, it looks almost like, uh, if you've ever seen insulation, you know, fiberglass insulation that's compressed into a, a bale like that, you know, you, you see that and you say, okay, that's not going to be too heavy. It's, this stuff weighs a ton. <laughs> I went to pick this up and I went, oh, that's not moving. <laughs> I was really shocked at how heavy this stuff was. And uh, <clears throat> I'm there struggling to get this onto a cart. <clears throat> Excuse me. Struggling to get this onto a cart. And this little Mennonite boy, and you know they're, they're Mennonite because of the way they dress. <clears throat> he walks up to me. I, I mean, this kid was maybe maybe eight years old. He walks up to me and says, Hi, would you like some help with that? <laughs> and I looked at him and I thought, this thing probably outweighs you by at least twofold, maybe threefold. <laughs> You're not going to be able to lift this. And I thought at best I could get him to take one end of it and he'd probably wind up getting hurt. So I said, no, thank you. Uh, and then he moved on. And uh, I then went and, and actually got the first bail up and thought, oh boy, I wish I hadn't sent him away. <laughs> Anyway, got it all onto the card, got it into the back of the wife's car, and now I have to deal with it. So, fortunately, I've got a wheelbarrow and gravity on my side this time. So, hopefully, that will go relatively smoothly. And also, my wife warned me if her car smells of compost, she's going to be mad at me. So, hopefully, I'll have time to sort of air things out before the rain comes. That's my day. Looking forward to uh, working outside. It's hard. I usually wind up with a heating pad and ibuprofen for a couple days after doing it, but 
something about that kind of work that just makes you feel alive. So with that, folks, I'm going to finish up this haunted pirate ship, move on to some haunted bookshop. And get outside and get to work. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Sunday. You have a fantastic week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.